Greetings, everyone. Hope all of you are having an absolutely fantastic day. We're back again with more Pathfinder Wrath of the Righteous. And this time, wanted to start doing builds for all of the undead team members you get as a lich. I know many of you have been very excited for this. I'm absolutely happy to break down their builds and try to let you know how I built them up so you can get your own ideas about what would be best for you. And we'll go in the order in which you are able to recruit them. So we're gonna start with Staunton Vane. Please keep in mind, when we go to the spell book and the items that Staunton has, at the bottom of the screen, it will show my entire party, which many of them have the other undead party members that you get throughout the game. So if you are at all concerned about that being spoiled for you, you should probably just watch these character level ups and then stop at that point. Of course, always the chapters are below to make sure nothing you don't want to know gets spoiled. And with that, let's go ahead and dive in. Stalton Vane has by far the worst build, in, in my opinion, the worst build that Alcat gives to you for a party member. It is just flat out awful. War Priest itself is great. There's a lot to love about being a war priest, but the way in which they've done it here, not cool. So first let's go over what you actually get from the class. So as a war priest, you're gonna have specific weapon and armor proficiency. So simple weapons, martial weapons, you're gonna be proficient with everything up to heavy armor and you're also going to have shield proficiency. You're going to get spontaneous inflict since you are an evil war priest, even though Stalton was uh, technically good at one point when you raise him, he's going to be lawful evil. And this means that he can convert any of the spells in his spell book into an inflict spell that can be used to damage limit living enemies or harm undead creatures. So that's definitely useful to you. Um, he also gets a strength surge. So this means you can gain an enhancement bonus equal to half your war priest level on melee attack rolls, combat maneuver checks that rely on strength, strength based skills and strength checks for one round. Really, really cool stuff. Um, you also have the evil ability. So for one minute, you, an ally that you put this on deals an additional 1d6 points of damage against good creatures. And during this time, his attacks are treated as evil for the purposes of overcoming damage reduction. And then later on, it's also going to give you a summit. In my opinion, this really isn't all that great, but it's there and available for you in case you want to use it. And then he also gets negative energy fervor, which is basically a heal spell that he can use on himself or on other party members, basically lay on hands for a war priest. Um, this is just all right. I was never really impressed with how much healing it was able to do, but in a pinch, it is available for you. He is able to channel negative energy, which again is going to be very useful considering, um, this is going to be a Lich Plather when you would be using him. So more than likely you're probably trying to get an all undead party. He also gets sacred armor, which allows him to enhance his armor with a divine power as a swift action, giving the armor a plus one enhancement bonus that increases over time. He can also add different properties to his armor, such as energy resistance or fortification, spell resistance, things of that nature. So he's got a lot of options as far as what you might want to do to make him more tanky, depending upon the enemies that you're facing. Really, really good stuff. Uh, Stalton, if you take the time to activate these, can definitely um, stay up on his feet. And then he also gets Sacred Weapon, which similar to what Shamans get, allows him to apply an enhancement bonus on a particular weapon. And then he also is going to get special abilities with it, like Brilliant Energy, Flaming, Frost, things of that nature. Now, in the description, it says that some of these properties are based on his alignment, such as if he's chaotic, he can get anarchic. If he's evil, he can get unholy, things of that nature. Um, Stalton has holy and unholy, even though he's evil. I'm not sure the reason for that. I don't know if that's a bug 
or if it's intended for him to have both because he was at one time good. But I had him running wholly the entire game and definitely was not disappointed. The very last thing at level 20 that he'll get as a war priest is the aspect of war. And this you activate it as a swift action and it's gonna treat his level as his base attack bonus. He's also gonna get damage resistance 10 flat and he'll be able to move at full speed regardless of the armor he is wearing or his encumbrance. And this ability is going to last for one minute. Very, very powerful stuff. Obviously, it's great to be able to use this in a boss battle. So you can see from all of that, the mechanics of War Priest are great. The problem is in the feats and the way Stalin is actually built up. It just doesn't make much sense. So he's a basic dwarf, and then for his background, he's been given guard, which is going to add perception to the list of his class skills. That's fine. And for level one as a feat, they've given him toughness. We've had this conversation before. I know some of you disagree with me, but me personally, I think toughness is a worthless feat. I feel like even if you're playing unfair and you want to make your person more sturdy, you're just not taking toughness to do that. There's a ton of different ways to try to make your character more tanky and try to ensure that they're staying up on their feet during difficult fights. I don't feel like toughness buys you much, especially not at level one. Then at level three, they gave them heavy armor focus again. This is not a good feat investment. That plus one on AC bonus, there's a bunch of other different ways you could give him something far more valuable. Then also at level three, they gave him tower shield proficiency. So again, I feel like this is absolutely worthless. Vast majority of people do not use tower shields because unless you have a build centered around shields that finds a way to alleviate the uh, penalty that it gives you on attack rolls is just not it's not viable like you might do this to switch things up and just because you might feel like it's fun to have somebody who's using tower shields but it's not really a standard part of most people's builds it especially doesn't make sense here because at level one for war priest when you chose your sacred weapon they automatically gave stall in vain the glaive which means you are really supposed to be using glaives as you're leveling up, you cannot use a glaive and a tower shield or any shield for that matter at the same time. So this is again, a worthless feed investment. Power attack is technically fine. Most frontline fighters, you would really want them to have attack. The problem with Vayne is his strength is extremely low. It takes a long time to really build his strength up better, which means also it's a long while before you feel comfortable taking the penalty that you get from using power attack during your melee attacks. So honestly, even though overall, considering he's supposed to be an upfront, upfront fighter, this is not a bad investment. It's a bad investment considering the way his character is built, especially at the time that you get him, which is going to be at level 11. Next, he gets Dazzling Display. Again, this is terrible for him. Uh, he comes with zero ranks in persuasion and he has low charisma. His charisma ranking is only level 12. You are just not going to be able to build him up where he's going to be able to use dazzling display or dreadful carnage with any sort of reliable consistency. So this does nothing for him. Cleave is okay if you're going to build yourself up to be able to get improved cleaving finish and all the great things that does for you. We do not have enough feats to really make that viable. I mean, you could do it because you have the regular feats and the additional bonus combat feats, but it just doesn't make very much sense considering the things that he does not have. You would basically have to sacrifice everything else in order to be able to get improved cleave. So this again does not make sense. This is another conversation that we've had before where I know some of you disagree with me, but for the most part, I stand on what I said. I feel like a lot of times you're using channel positive or negative energy after a fight has been finished, not during a fight. Therefore, I don't feel like selective channel is a good investment. I will, I will concede that 
at the very least, if you're using somebody as your main healer, like Soulsail or like Darren, it is useful during a fight if things have went really, really bad to be able to heal everybody at once. But Vayne isn't even really a healer. Like he only goes up to spell level six. He's just not that great as somebody you want to specialize to be a healer specifically. So having him use selective channel as if he's supposed to fill that role to me, again, I, I stand on where I on what I originally said. I just don't feel like this is a good investment for him. Then you also have agile uh, maneuvers, which basically takes your dexterity bonus. Um, it allows you to add it to your base attack bonus and size bonus when determining your combat maneuver bonus instead of your strength bonus useless. <laughs> Why does he have this? He's not uh, doing combat maneuvers all that much anyway, if at all as he's definitely not doing it when I play with them, this comes off as yet again, another wasted feat. And then finally you get to level 11 when you can start doing things for him. So I would say the vast majority of what's custom on his character pretty much wastes the good things about War Priest and leaves you in a situation where you're trying to make up for this starting build for the vast majority of the time that you have them. But we're gonna dive right in and try to make the best of it as we can. So let's go ahead and get started. And for skills, Stun comes with 10 ranks in Lore Religion. I don't see any reason to change from that. He does get a couple of extra points in it because of his wisdom. And wisdom is a rare stat for your other party members. I don't think there's any undead party member you get that could fill this up properly. And um, more than likely your Lich isn't going to be able to do much with it either if you made him a wizard or a sorcerer. So I don't see any reason to switch from this. He only gets one rank anyway. And for the first feat that you're able to select, I would personally go with Greater Weapon Focus and then Glaive. Like I said before, his strength is very low. And so for the first few levels, you're definitely going to have issues with him actually being able to hit anything. So any addition you can get to his attack rolls is definitely worth it. He's going to need that help until you're able to give him some more mechanics that's going to help make up for his low strength. Okay, so at level 12, you're going to be able to look at the attribute points. These stats are going to look high because, of course, he's got all the level 20 equipment that I put on him. But actually for his strength, the base value is 15. So you're definitely going to want to put effort into raising that up ASAP. His base value for dexterity is 18, which I guess is okay because he does, it does give him a couple of more points towards his AC and makes him a little bit more tanky, but I don't like it because I feel like it comes at the expense of some of the other things he really needs like strength. Of course, he completely dumps intelligence, which is fine. So that's a level seven, but then his base wisdom score is actually 12. So he does not have high wisdom. He's not meant to be a spellcaster. I already told you he's capped out at level six. So he's not really someone you want to pump a lot of wisdom into. But then for charisma, he's sitting at a 12, especially because even though the base value is 14, he gets a negative two in it for being a dwarf. Remember, he's undead. So charisma counts as constitution. I usually want my constitution to be at least 14 for a frontline fighter. So more than likely, you're gonna have to use your headband space for boosting his charisma to try to make sure he doesn't have a constitution that's so low that it's trouble. It's troubling to be able to keep him on his feet. But I would say the actual attribute points you get that you can allocate should be put into his strength to make him a more competent melee fighter. And for your bonus combat feat, I will go ahead and get outflank. You all already know, I feel like all your melee fighters and your archer should have outflank. This is no exception. And then for your next feat, I'd go improve critical. Glaive. So at level 15, you get two feats back to back. I'd put one into critical focus to help make sure you're getting as many crits as possible. And then for your bonus combat feat, I would actually go ahead and get shattered defenses. Now this is a personal choice. Because of the way that I run my undead parties, I have the number three party member and the number four party member that you get focused on dreadful carnage. 
and shaking all the enemies as the fight goes on. I also always have frightening aura on my lich. So most of the enemies we should we are going up against should definitely be shaken. And so I put this on all of my melee fighters so that they can take advantage of that. If you don't plan to play that way, you might want to take something else here like weapon specialization or one of the critical feats, something of that sort. At level 17, I get Weapon Specialization, Glaive. At level 18, I get Greater Weapon Specialization, Glaive. And then at 19, I take Blinding Critical. Okay, now that we finished the character levels, let's go ahead and take a look at the Mythic options. At Mythic level 1, I get Thundering Blows. Like I said, he's going to be missing for quite some time until you're able to get him the gear and the mechanics that are really going to help him. So I think it's to your advantage to have Thundering Blows to ensure every round he does some type of damage to the enemies you're going up against. And then at Mythic Level 2, it might be tempting to get Destructive Shockwave because he is still missing quite a bit. Remember, when you get him, you're going to be able to choose your first three Mythic options right off the bat. But keep in mind, again, that strength is very, very low. So I would venture to say at this point in the game, his strength is not high enough for you to really get the most out of Destructive Shockwave, and it's just not worth it. So instead, I would say you should focus on trying to help him be able to hit more and pick up weapon focus. At Mythic Level 3, he is a frontline fighter, so I would go ahead and take Last Stand. At Mythic Level 4, you could go ahead and take Destructive Shockwave, but me, I'm really big on crits, especially with all of my fighters having outflank. So I prefer to just go ahead and get improved critical. At Mythic Level 5, go ahead and get Ever Ready. And then at Mythic Level 6, I feel comfortable taking Destructive Shockwave. At Mythic Level 7, I go ahead and take Unrelenting Assault, giving him a little bit more damage. At Mythic Level 8, I like taking Weapon Specialization here. It's going to give you an additional boost to damage, especially because you took both Weapon Specialization and Greater Weapon Specialization. At Mythic Level 9, I'll go ahead and take Leading Strike. And then for Mythic Level 10, I will probably either take Power Attack Mythic or Flawless Attacks, because by now he's definitely doing multiple attacks, especially depending upon what buffs you have on him from his spell list that's available. Okay, so now that we've went through the levels, let's go ahead and take a look at the spell book. At spell level one, the only spell I really use is Shield of Faith. It's nice to have as an alternative to using Deflection Rings. Um, other than that, most of this long term you're not going to use. Usually we, you would use Remove Fear a lot more, but I believe that the undead are immune to fear in this game. Now, if you go to abilities and then look at undead creature, it does not mention mind affecting effects or fear as something that they are immune to. But I never use remove fear, or at least once I had a full party, I never use remove fear and I never had an issue with fear. So I believe they're immune to that and might be immune to mind affecting in general. Um, because I also do not remember any of my undead party members um, being used against me with dominate or something of that sort. And I'm not the type to always use resist alignment. So I believe they have immunity to those type of things and never slotted remove fear once I had a full undead party. Then at level two, effortless armor is definitely very nice, allows you to move at your natural speed, no matter what armor you're wearing. And then I do have protection from alignment available just for those really, really tough boss battles where it's nice to have that additional bit of protection. Um, most of what's here, I don't feel like I would really use uh, long term in the party. Then at level three, most of your levels are probably going to be filled up with magical vestment. Um, it's going to get, you're going to need one for Stalin. And then the third undead party member you get needs three. One for his armor, one for his shield, and then one for his horse. And then you're also going to need one more for the fourth party member that you get. So, and remember, there's no other... Uh, clerics that you get in the party. So these cleric powers, you're either getting them from Stalin Vane, or you do have the option of having your skeletal champion 
outfitted with some cleric spells, but of course you can't control how many slots he has, how high the levels go, things of that nature. So Stalin is really probably gonna be your main source of what cleric powers he powers he does have available this last slot you can fill with whatever you like i felt comfortable putting prayer here because i feel like he's really praying to me so it's not it's not out of the ordinary as far as role playing you could also use archon czar if you wanted to then at level four i keep a couple of slots in greater magic weapon one for stalden because i couldn't find a really good plus five glaive for him so i use greater magic weapon to ensure that it's topped out at plus five and then same for the fourth undead party member he wields two scimitars and i never found a good replacement for the plus four scimitar he has so i put that in there these last four slots i feel like you really have two other options you could use. One is Crusader's Edge, which is actually really nice for your melee fighters. It's gonna allow them to try to nauseate outsiders um, when you do a critical hit against them. So that can be pretty nice. But I really use Divine Power, which allows him to get a plus one luck bonus on attack rolls, weapon damage rolls, strength checks, and strength base skill checks for everything three caster levels he has maximum plus six which at level 20 you are definitely going to be hitting that plus six and keep in mind it's a luck bonus so it does not clash with the uh enhancement bonus that you get from strength surge so it's really really a nice boost and power for him then at level five Oh, you would have to, here's where you have to make a real decision about whether or not you want to um, stick with a headband that increases his charisma, or if you want to switch over to a wisdom headband so that he, he can use ranks five and six of his spell book. If you decide to give him a wisdom headband and it unlocks level five, then I fill out most of the slots with spell resistance, which is going to, at this point, give my party members a uh, rank of 32 in spell resistance. So really nice protection. You also have um, uh, Sacred Nimbus, which is going to do damage to any evil creatures that are attacking you in melee and also is going to limit some of the damage that you can take from evil alignment spells. So that could be really nice uh, protection for them and an easy way to do damage to other creatures. And then at level six, Eagle Soul is a fantastic buff. I did not use it because it's a surge of holy power. So I felt like from a role playing standpoint, it didn't really make sense for him. So I filled out most of the slots with harm, which is a fantastic single target heal for undead party members. And basically if there was only one person who needed healing, I used that. If multiple people needed healing, I could either channel negative energy or the Lich has a spell that automatically heals all the undead uh, members of your party. So that's what I use for the most part here at level six. I could have probably slotted some of the um, uh, spells that were going to give an enhancement bonus to certain skills. But since I did not give him the mythic buffs that allow these spells to last for 24 hours, I just didn't want to be bothered with having to check to make sure whether or not they're on or anything of that nature. Pretty much the buffs that I always wanted to have on, I let the Lich handle it for the most part. Or I created posters and scrolls that would be able to mimic the effects of effectively, but still have the Lich be the one to cast them to ensure that they were 24 hours. If we look at his inventory, he's got boots that don't really help him all that much, Lord Nature Treks. Um, but remember, because he's undead, he doesn't deal with... Um, being tired or exhausted. So this is just to fill a slot. Um, then he also gets the Fentress Gets, which is going to give you a plus three damage bonus for your two-handed weapon. Also gets a strength plus six from this display of power belt. He's got a tunic of Arden War Priest, which gives him three additional uses of fervor per day, which is basically the War Priest version of Lay on Hands. He's got plus five heavy armor plus six natural armor because we don't have anybody with access to bark skin. So this helps increase his AC a little bit. I've got a plus six uh, headband for charisma on him to boost up his um, 
uh, constitution or health rather. Uh, if you take this off and then put on a wisdom headband instead, I think he would lose around 60 points in health. So it basically be around 200. Um, the eyes are for maddening gaze, which I almost never use, but if I did use it, it would force enemies to make a will saving throw DC 32, or they would suffer intelligence damage and become confused. So it could be really nice, but I just never had occasion where I really, really felt like it was needed. He's got a plus five cloak of resistance, uh, all around defense. And I think this party member has the other ring. So they basically get the effects of back to back. I think it's a plus two bonus to AC, if I remember correctly, something along those lines. Um, Ring of Imminent Demise. If I do an attack of opportunity, there's a chance that the enemy will be knocked down and it gives him a plus two competence bonus on attack and damage rolls with two handed weapons. Very nice. And then finally, the bracers, um, whenever he does a critical hit, there is a chance that the enemy will become vulnerable to piercing damage for two rounds. And then I have the plus three glaive, which is going to give him two additional uses of fervor and channel energy um, after a rest. So all of that together, I did the best that I could <laughs> with him. Uh, to be honest with you, by the time he gets up to like level 18, somewhere in that range, he is pretty effective as a fighter. Um, he was definitely uh, killing enemies and hitting pretty consistently. It's just the path to get him there can be very, very irritating, especially compared to some of the other companions that you get. But, you know, in game wise, he's not terrible. But when you first get them, wow, I, I do not like that starting build at all. But overall, I love having an undead party. I love the mechanic of being able to revive some of the special characters in the game to be um, undead party members for the Lich. So no matter what, I'm glad he's here. And that's the video. Hope all of you enjoyed this content. If you did, please leave me a like down below, share this content and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. I will see you all in the next video. Take care.